Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to this rather hip and thigh and leg episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. Okay guys, let's let's be honest here, yeah. When you think gangster, when you think hip, when you think with it, you think of me. Ha ha. And ha. I'm with it. Grown up, born and bred in sausages and beans here in South London, mate. <laughs> if I'm being honest, being an Asian here in South London, obviously I went through my whole gangster phase, yeah? We're gonna take you on a bad boy flight, my centrics on the mic tonight. And recording raps on my computer, you know, five pound microphone and using Fruity Loops and all that. But just like with any other gangster phase, most people when they leave school and they have to apply for jobs and they get into the real world, they realize that obviously this whole gangster thing doesn't pay the bills. And to be frank, every other guy wants to be a gangster and there's more serious gangster people out and about that will shoot you for flipping no reason whatsoever just so they can increase their cred. So what I did was I asked some madrasa kids about which sort of music they listen to, yeah? I like to do this and just find out, keep my ears to the ground and that, innit? So naturally, they denied it first, as you do. Yeah, so when I pressed them, they gave me a few names. And one of those names was M. Honcho. That name seemed quite familiar to me. And not only because he sounds like a Mexican wrestler, but because YouTube most often has him trending on the trending section yeah and he does tend to hit 1 million views quite quickly and quite often. So M Honcho is a trap singer who also wears a mask yeah so naturally when you add these two things together because it's not done by many people in his industry it's a bit of a niche yeah and that's why he's doing so well. Those of you guys that have gone to state schools or have kids that go to state schools, you guys know that the genre that kids tend to listen to, especially those that consider themselves cool, is mostly trap, grime and drill music. Which is quite aggressive, it's quite violent, but that's what they're listening to. Shouting at them or telling them Allah's gonna become angry, or sending them to the mosque or telling them to uh, pray extra nafal salah is not going to get them to change that, yeah? You have to understand what draws them to that sort of music and why that lifestyle is appealing to them. And most often than not, when they look at these people, they exude confidence, yeah? They have a lot of jewels, a lot of money, and of course women. And all of these things to a child is something that they look up to. The self-righteous or deluded from amongst you naturally have probably already left a comment telling me that I should make videos that appeal to you. But uh, like Muhammad Hijab said, Yeah, I'll do what I want. And of course my videos are primarily for the non-practicing folk. The practicing from amongst you, you guys got loads of channels, yeah? That just give lectures and talks and that sort of stuff. The reason why I think it's very important to talk about these rappers is because to our kids, these guys are the pinnacle of gangster. They have a very well-crafted image and lifestyle. Now our kids have their words on loop like some sort of mantra. Whether they're walking down the street, whether they're doing their homework, their lyrics are constantly being reaffirmed into their subconscious. And even when they're brushing their teeth, they're chanting the lyrics like some sort of prayer. So you coming along and saying, Oh, just, you know, read the, the Quran for 5-10 minutes. Oh, pray your salah. That's not going to do much. You have to take a different angle. I don't act like I'm bad. I don't act like I'm bigger than anyone, badder than anyone. Um, I've not claimed to be the biggest G the world's ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all of these little things that some people might do, I don't do that because it's just, I've gone past that stage. That stuff is very childish to me. I think the point that he's made is quite profound. It's fine when you're young, but when you truly understand what this lifestyle entails, there are barbaric people on the street because they feel that's the only way for them to survive. To be absolute, merciless, vindictive brutes. It's literally survival of the fittest. It's a jungle. You don't try and ride a wild horse. 
Yeah, I mean, whoever even tries to do that, you're just asking for it. And the aim that Snoop Dogg and all these guys, when they're in interviews, they say, now we've left the ghetto, yeah? And people don't respect us, they don't like us. That's because we're not in the ghetto and why on earth would we go back? And a very profound quote comes to mind. You cannot heal in the same environment that made you sick. <laughs> and that's why in Islam, we have the concept of hijrah as well. Migration, yeah? Moving away from the environment that you know, affects your Iman and your faith. Um, and you know, mental health is a serious thing. I've been, I've had times where, you know, I've been, you know, mentally not there in terms of like depression and stuff like that. And it's just about overcoming it. And this is very profound as well. A lot of people that watch these rappers think that they're happy, that they have everything. But naturally, true happiness comes from within. Yeah, from knowing your purpose and fulfilling your purpose. If there is a machine, and it's not doing what it's supposed to do, eventually it's going to break. The circuits are not prepared for what you are expecting from that device, so naturally it's going to break down. Even my revert friend used to say that when he was uh, in that gangster lifestyle and he would go home and he just couldn't stand that silence, yeah, because he would have to reflect on you know, his lack of purpose, his mistakes, his vices, so he would drink, he would take drugs, he would party, you know, drown out those silences with music. Then he accepted Islam and then he was actually able to appreciate what he was trying to avoid beforehand. And that's why guys, it's important to at least acknowledge your vices. Yeah, acknowledge them. Yeah, the analogy is like broken glass. You need to acknowledge it so you can sweep it, so you're not going to step on it again. So what's important to you outside of making music? Maintaining with my family, bro. The family? The family, yeah, which is including my friends, our class them as family. Mm -hmm. uh, that's important to me. Uh, Travelling is important to me. Uh, you know, relaxation is important to me. You know, building a future is important to me. Getting married is important to me. Having okay. kids is important to me. Yeah. Family. I mean, they drive us round the bend. But when we go to hospital, it's these guys that are there for us. Whilst our friends will just be double tapping our pictures or, or, or liking them on social media, our family actually is there for us in our time of need. They'll be at your funeral. They'll be the ones that are praying for you. Yeah, They're the ones that are forced to be with you in happiness and in sadness. So we have to make sure we study them. Yeah, We study them and we make it work because we have to. Islam is a way of life, yeah, be it for the trap stars, you know, the grime artists, the rap artists, you know, the good people, the bad people, whoever you are. Islam is a lifestyle for all. I know looking at some believers, you get the impression like they have a monopoly over the religion. And you know what? That's one of the things that used to put me off as well. But when I started looking into the religion, judging the religion by its own merits and not by the adherence to the religion and the people following it, that's when my life changed. Had I relied on people, yeah, even people that go to the mosque or people that, you know, self-righteous, yeah, 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 nah, that would have put me right off, mate. He seems like a very mature, down-to-earth and nice person. I even saw on his Instagram page, he's got a Arabic quote which translates as, all praise be to Allah under all circumstances. Now, M. Honcho ha doesn't talk about his ethnicity on, or, or religion because obviously he doesn't want to be uh, prejudiced or discriminated against uh, just because of that. And y you know what? I don't really blame him, to be honest. Yeah, so I'm not going to speculate out of respect for his wishes. But, you know, for somebody to even be using um, Arabic or things that you know come from the Quran, you know, it takes a lot of guts. Yeah, it takes a lot of guts because nowadays people that show any affiliation towards Islam in the age of Islamophobia that we're in, it's not clout. You don't get clout. You actually get you're spoken down to. You actually lose credibility. And you know what? It shows that somebody even in his position appreciates the majesty of the Creator and realizes his importance as well. Yeah, which I think is quite profound and should be pondered upon because a lot of people look at these people. Oh, that's happiness. They've reached it, but they've reached it. But God is still important to them. Why? Why? Yeah, because you know what? They might just be a victim of their circumstances. Yeah, you don't know how these people have grown up, merely saying, oh, these people and otherizing them. 
yeah or calling them crazy the worst thing is to call somebody crazy it's because it's dismissive yeah you're not trying to understand them and help them and you know what as mature Muslims I think that's what we should be doing and that's why our marriages don't work our friendships don't work is because we don't take the time to understand where a specific action is coming from yeah where is it rooted from it might be rooted from trauma it might be rooted from you know habit or, or the upbringing or something understand and then give da'wah to the person don't just give your copy paste answer ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah yeah invite all to the way of thy lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching yeah that's very important wisdom using wisdom right there yeah not just moaning and groaning oh it's the times don't blame the times mate yeah we are what makes these times so let's not be deluded let's leave it there until next time assalamu alaikum